Hello and welcome back to another video in my beginner guide series. We've covered so many topics already getting to this point, but now it's time to start talking about money, or in this case, commas. Achievements and quests can be a fantastic way to make a little bit of money, but if you wanna make good money in this game, you need to know about two big subjects, working professions and working those markets. <laughs> Welcome to Benjamite Gaming, where it's my goal to bring you fun and fantastic Dofus PVM content. Alright, we've gone over characteristics, spells, maps, questings, achievements, all kinds of stuff, and now we're going to go over professions. Again, a massive topic, so I'm going to just make this as brief and quick as possible, but I'm going to give you enough information to know how to do it and to progress on your own as you move forward. If you come down here to the little crossed axes or you can press the J on your keyboard, that's going to bring up the professions list. Your character can level in every one of these professions. There's basically three types. You've got the crafting professions, which are the blue icons. You've got the gathering professions, which are going to be your green icons. And then you got your mages, which are going to be kind of the reddish pinkish color here. Your professions, just like your character, has to level. That's what these little bars represent here. Any of these that say level one means I haven't progressed them at all. And right now I need 20 XP in this profession to take it to level two. These ones got leveled up a little bit because we went through the tutorial and they have you do a little bit of crafting in there to kind of give you an idea of how it works. The higher you are leveled in that profession, the higher the level of the craft is you can make or the resource you can gather in respects to the gathering ones. For example, with this jeweler right now, I can craft level one and level two jewelry. But if I go down here to the carver where I'm only level one, I can only make level one crafts. So as you progress through the game, if you've got a level 40 helmet that you wanna make and your tailor is only level 20, you need to go up 20 more levels before you could take a shot at crafting that helmet. I've made a handful of videos so far on how to level some of these professions and those are on my channel if you wanna check them out. But otherwise, we're gonna go over this real briefly just so you got an idea of how it all works. All right, so right now, if we wanted to look at the jeweler and we wanted to see about crafting this nimble ring, on the right hand side, it shows you the amount of XP your profession will get when you craft this item and the resources needed to make it. So we need three glute skin and three eternal ashes. Once you have the resources that you need for a craft, you have to go to the workshop that's associated with that profession in order to craft it. If we wanted to craft this ring, we need the jeweler workshop. We can go and bring up our map. And right here, again, this is workshops. If you click this on or off, it'll help highlight where those are at. Until you begin to learn what you're looking for, you'll get the hang of what you're looking for pretty quick. But the jewel is for the jeweler, and it says jeweler's workshop right there. This is where we would need to go to craft that nimbly ring. Now the gathering professions are a little bit different. They actually get XP from both gathering the item and crafting recipes. You've got recipes listed here, just like before. With four wheat, I could make this bread. And to do that, I would need to go to the farmer's workshop to do it. But if I'm going to go gather wheat, the resource tab becomes available. We can click on this and it's going to list all the items that my farmer is able to gather. Now, right now, wheat is the only thing that I can gather. But as you continue to level, things will get added here of more resources that you can go out and gather. Now, the cool thing about resources is they're just kind of spread out through the world. So you'll find areas that are big farmlands and you can go collect all types of, they call them cereals, but you can go collect all kinds of cereals. You'll find areas where it's very foresty. So your lumberjack could cut down all kinds of trees, but it's just kind of out and about. You'll even find them in dungeons sometimes resources that can be gathered. But right here, you're gonna see that with the wheat, we're gonna get 10 XP every time we harvest a wheat. So we have 20 XP right now. We need to get to 60 to reach level three. So that means at 10 XP, we would need to do four wheat harvests and then we would go up a level. The one to seven shows you the range of how much wheat you will collect when you harvest. Okay, so let's go gather a little bit of wheat so I can show you the process and then we're also gonna use a workbench so I can show you how that works also. 
I've gone to the coordinates of negative one, negative four, which is just up one and over one to the right. And I've come to this section just because there are the potential for wheat to be located on this map. Now, as I hover over this, see how it says exhausted? That means somebody recently harvested this, so I have to wait for it to grow back. Now, this is not the only map with wheat on it. I could run around all these different fields and probably find some that have already recovered. As you can see, some of that wheat just popped back up. So all I gotta do is click on it. You'll go over there, you'll do your little action, and then you can click on the next one and collect that. And if you watch, there's a little number that's gonna float up. See that little wheat with the six next to it right there? That means I got six from that gathering animation right there. And I think the previous one, it said that I got three. So two times I've gathered nine wheat now from what I've done right there. The more rare the resource, or the higher the level, the longer it takes to respawn. So if you're looking for something that's pretty rare, you're not gonna wanna just sit on a map and wait for it to come back. You're better off to kind of run around or maybe even collect it as you're working. Now there is another option. If you don't wanna go out and try to hunt or harvest the resources that you need, you can also go to the markets and purchase what it is that you're looking for. Now markets are something I'm gonna cover in the next section of the video, but I just wanted to mention that there is another option if you don't feel like going out and trying to click the wheats and gather the things that you need. Since we now have a handful of wheats, let's go inside the workshop here and I'm gonna show you how to turn that into something. Okay, inside a workshop, there can be one workbench or there might be multiple things that you have to use. For example, here we have a grinder and an oven. Now, depending on what it is you're trying to make, you might need to use the different profession workbench. So if we bring up our professions, and we go back here to recipes, we know that we have this wheat right here. We're gonna to try to make this in carnum bread. What we're gonna do is go over to the oven, you just click on it, and you're gonna see the recipes pop up over here on the left. Now, if you look at the cat bread up here, you're gonna see these little X's underneath the ingredients. That means you don't have that ingredient required for making that recipe. This one down here, it shows that we have this one, because this only requires two wheat, but we're missing these three. If we only had three wheats instead of four, you would see the symbol lit up, but you would see a little yellow exclamation mark in the corner, and that means that you have some of the item, you just don't have enough. So those are the three symbols that you will see when you go to craft an item. Now let's say that this list is really long and you don't wanna to try to sort through all of that. You can click the only display recipes I can craft, and it's gonna eliminate anything you don't have the ingredients for. Now, if you click that and the recipe that you're wanting to make doesn't show up, it means one of two things. Either one, you're missing an ingredient that you need for that recipe, or you're at the wrong workbench. So if you don't see your item and you know that you've got what you need, just exit out of here and check to see if there's another workbench in there. Maybe that's what you need to go to to craft the item that you're trying to do. Now that we know that this is what we're looking at, this times three down here just means that I have enough resources to make three of these. The quickest way to transfer everything over here, this isn't too bad because there's only one item, but you'll get things up to eight items needed for that. And instead of, you can drag this over and you can change this to a four and click okay, and it puts it down here. But a much faster way to do that is just click the picture. And it puts what's needed out here as long as you have it in your inventory. You can increase the quantity that you want by pushing the plus sign or the negative sign here. Or if you click right on the box itself, it'll give you the option to type in a number. So if you were trying to make 200 of these, well, you don't wanna to go to town clicking that plus sign for 200, but you can click that box and come here and you could type in 200, click okay. It puts it down there. Go and click the combine button. And remember, as a gatherer, you get XP for both gathering the resource and for crafting it into recipes. That's why we just got a chunk of XP for that. If we look underneath consumables, you will now see we have bread and these things had the effect of giving you 12 health points back. Remember how I told you there's bread you can eat to help speed up the process of recovery? That's what this is right here. Also just wanna point out every time you level a profession, you get a chunk of pods added to your character. If you're struggling with carrying stuff, get all your professions and level them up even just five or six levels because as you can see, I just got 12 additional pods for that one level. If you did 10 professions up one level, that's an extra 120 pods that you could have available on your character just because you did a tiny bit of profession leveling. That's a great way to help if you're struggling with carrying enough stuff. Certain professions are a lot heavier to work with than others. 
the lumberjack and the miner, the things that they collect are five pods a piece. So if you're trying to do something that's a little lighter so that you can collect more at a time, the alchemist and the farmer are fantastic for that because their stuff tends to weigh only two pods a piece. All right, now that I've kind of given you a really quick rundown on how the professions work, it all works generally the same way. The only profession that's kind of unique is the hunter profession. This right here, the hunter profession, this actually works by equipping a weapon that has the hunter attribute. If I go to Carver, and you're gonna see right here it says hunting bow. And see how it says right there underneath effect it says hunting weapon. If I equip this weapon and I go do fights, I have the chance of dropping meats from those fights. Now you don't get XP towards your hunter by dropping the meats, but what you do get is you can take that meat to a butcher shop and convert it into something that is usable, turn it into a recipe, that's how you level your hunter. Having a hunter weapon on is a fantastic way to make some extra money while you're trying to level. And speaking of money, the next section we need to go over is how to use those markets and how to make some commas. All right, now that you know how to work professions, you know how to get some loot and how to turn that loot into something, you need to know how do I then make some money potentially with that loot that's what we're going to cover in this section. Again, a big topic, but I'm going to show you at least enough to get yourself going. So when it comes to markets, there's basically three main markets. You have the resources, the consumables, and the equipment, which are basically what relate to these three tabs. These are your three main markets. But up here in Incarnum, there's only one market, and that's the resource market. When you get to some of the bigger cities, which are Banta and Brockmar, I'm just going to throw them out there. You'll know what they are once you've seen them, once you get into that portion of the game. You'll find a few more markets there. I'm going to go over the resource market because that's the only one available here in Incarnum. The consumable market works basically the same way as the resource market. The equipment market works a little bit different. Now, if you want a detailed breakdown of how the equipment market works, go to that video I referenced earlier on how to play Dofus in 2020. And again, the link is gonna be in the description below. And I break down how to use the equipment market both for trying to find sets, build sets, and also how to list your equipment, hopefully for the most money possible given whatever it is you're trying to sell. For this, we're gonna click on the little chalkboard. You just click on that. And this is the market screen. Again, it looks kind of wild, but don't worry, it's super easy to use. It breaks down into two sections. You got your purchase section and your sales section. We're gonna go over the purchase section first. On the left-hand side, you're gonna see basically, these are the ways that you can sort for finding something. So for example, if you wanted to make that nimble ring and you needed the glute skin, you could kind of come up here and start typing in glute now you don't have to type in everything before results start popping up, just kind of like Google, right? Right here, you'll see that the list has narrowed down to four and you could continue to type if you wanted to, glute, okay. Now we've narrowed it all the way down to the one. If you knew the category that you wanted to use, you could also narrow it down by just selecting the category. Like if what you were looking for was an egg, you could just click egg and it'll narrow it down to just that section. But most of the time, it's gonna be easier just to type in what it is you're looking for. Once you've typed it in, you can then click on that item and it's gonna drop down and it's going to show you the price of someone who is selling one as just one individual glute. This one is a bulk of 10 and this is a bulk of 100. Now, something important to note here is that the cheapest resource in each of these sections are what's listed first. Person selling this might not be the same person selling a bulk of 10, but they listed theirs at 173. Somebody's probably got one listed at 174 and then somebody at 175, but the cheapest one is what is displayed and sold first. So when you go to list an item here in the resource market and the consumable market, doesn't really apply to equipment. Again, watch that video and I'll show you why that doesn't really apply to equipment. But in the resource and the consumable, you wanna to try to list yours even if it's just one penny cheaper so that hopefully your sells first. If you had 10 glute skins, you could list it in here and you could put yours at 1988 and then yours would be displayed here until someone possibly came and undercut you by a penny. So it's, it's a bit of a battleground sometimes depending on how hard the resource is being pushed but then somebody will come through they'll probably buy a whole bunch of these at some point and then yours will get sold and you get your money so that's pretty much it that's how the purchase side works on the sales side 
this is where everything that you have listed currently would be showing up. We haven't put anything in the market yet, that's why it's empty. Bottom left hand corner, you will see the zero out of six, zero slash six. That means that I can currently list six things in the market. Now the way this relates to you is it's always double whatever the level of your character is. So right now we're level three, that's why I can list six items for sale. Once I reach level four, I could then put eight items for sale. Now the bulk item still counts as just one. So if I had 10 wheats and I listed a bulk of 10, that counts as one item in the market. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click wheat and then on the left hand side, some things pop up. The bottom left hand corner shows you what the prices are in the market right now for these items. So this is a real easy way to figure out, okay, I'm gonna list one of these. I need to undercut this guy. So I need to list one at seven so that it shows up as the first item to sell. Up here on the left is where the details of what it is that you're trying to sell. Patch price is gonna be your price, how much someone's gonna to have to pay. Well, we wanna put seven right there because we're trying to get the first one in there. This is where you could select your quantity. Now it's only giving me the option of one because I don't have the option of 10. But if I had say 100 of these wheats, this would drop down as I could say, I'm wanting to sell it as a one, as a bulk of 10 or a bulk of 100, and I would select that there. The sale fee is the price it's gonna cost you to list an item. And it shows right here, it's 2%. So the bigger the price is of the item that you're wanting to list, the bigger that you have to pay up front to list it. If you don't have enough commas to cover that fee, it won't let you put it up for sale. So you might have to lower your price or go make some more commas before you can sell it. But once we've selected that, we're gonna put push to sale. See how it pops up right here? It's gonna stay in the market for 28 days if nobody ever buys it. Now items that don't get purchased get put back into your bank account. Down in Astrid, once you get out of the Incarnum area, you're gonna find a big bank right there in the center of town. That's where you go in and you can access your bank. That's where your items go. That's also where your commas go when you sell an item. If this wheat were to sell, then seven commas would get deposited into that bank and then you can go access the bank to pull the commas out and put it in your inventory. You can also adjust the price. Let's say this is a cheap item, so it's not a very good example, but let's say you got something that's worth 100,000 commas and you got it listed and somebody came by and put 99,999. They undercut you by a penny and you're like, oh, I can't sell it now. You can select the item and you can then change your price. So you could go uh, down to six in this case. And as you can see, there's a little fee for modifying the price. And when you hit modify, it'll change it and then it resets the time back to 28 days. So if you got an item that's getting close to the end of its sale and you can see that the modification fee is less than the relisting fee. So maybe if it's a high dollar item, you catch it before your time runs out, you change your price, hit modify and it resets for another 28 days and you've got a new price on your item. I think that pretty much covers everything related to the markets. If you got any questions, again, leave it in the comments below. I'll try to get back with you as quickly as I can. All right, that's everything I got for you in this video. On my next beginner guide video, I plan on going over loads of tips, tricks, and resources to help you move forward as you continue to progress into this game. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you know exactly when those videos go live. And if you could do me one huge favor and just smack that like button for me, really helps me out, helps you to promote my channel and let people know that I'm here. That's everything I got. You be safe out there and I'll see you on the next one.